Gerald Soul, the owner of Miles Smith Farm in Loudoun, New Hampshire. And my first question is, how are your practices different or how do they differ from a conventional cattle farm? Well, a conventional cattle farm is typically one where the cattle are in a confined area. Of course, when cattle are, are first born, they start everybody every cow starts out on a pasture with its mother drinking milk and they, they eat grass for the first oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 months of their lives. And then, typically, they're put in a confined area where they're fed concentrated feed, so they gain weight quickly. And um, these can be, you know, they're everywhere, these confined, confined cattle operations. Um, you, what we do here differently at Miles Smith Farm is we keep our cattle on pastures for their whole lives. So they start out on pasture, they end up on pasture. We have to take them off pasture in the winter because they have to eat hay for some several of the months. Right. But they are on pasture um, for their whole lives. So oftentimes we hear the phrase uh, free range, right? And that's essentially what that means, that they're just they're grazing on a pasture. Well, that that's one of the meanings. Okay. But typically, um, if you say they're on a pasture or free range, that's the intent, is okay. that they, they're eating grass. Okay. Yeah. And what are the benefits of consuming uh, cattle or cows that come from a free-range environment versus one that comes from a pain environment? Well, I consider the changes uh, to be the, the, the benefits of being in a pasture-raised environment for the cow. The consumer, you may not notice so much difference between a confined cow and a pasture-raised cow, but the cow does. Okay. They spend their whole lives in a healthy environment. And not only are they um, enjoying their life eating grass, they're fertilizing the grass as they grow. I mean, there's a whole benefit to them. It's a cycle of... Supports uh, the environment. Right, right. Not only that, if the cow's happy, it's going to produce a more quality product. It is, it is. And you're going to be happy knowing you're consuming a cow that lit a happy life. Right. And that's, that's really what we feel is so important here at Milesmith Farm, is to make sure that the cows and all of our animals have a good life. And I've met the cows, so I know that they have a great life here. Can you explain the difference between a grain-fed animal and a grass-fed animal? What's it, the, two, the difference there? Well, there's, there's not a lot. A grain-fed animal usually grows a little faster because the grain gives them some added benefit. Um, in a situation where they're fed only grain and no hay, sometimes in, in, a, in a confined operation they have to be fed antibiotics on a systematic basis because antibiotics make the cattle feel better. If they feel sick, they don't eat. So this is something that happens in a confined cattle operation. Right, you may not notice the difference so much in taste. A grain-fed animal will usually have more fat in it. Okay. The grass-fed is usually more lean. Okay. But any animal, the animal makes no difference. It's the way it was raised. Okay. So you'll just notice a difference in fat. Would you say that it's, it's healthier, though, generally, for the cow to be eating the grass? Oh, it's much. It's much better for the okay. cow. The cows like it's it. not good for their digestion or something if they're eating a lot of grain. If they're eating a lot of grain. Okay. Now, they can eat small amounts of grain because they're very smart. Okay. If they're going to get sick and you're not giving them antibiotics, they'll stop eating okay. whatever you're giving okay. them. So they are, one thing I want to, you know, occasionally, if a cow eats a corn stalk, it's going to eat it because it likes it. Right. And if it gets sick, it's not going to eat it. Right. But what we do in confined cattle operations is, we, is they're given antibiotics so they don't know they're sick. Okay. So they don't stop eating the bad things. Right. So they'll pick and choose, and they're okay. smart. They okay. know what, what makes them feel good. Between an unhealthy and a healthy cow. <laughs> it is. A healthy cow will choose its food. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between um, a naturally raised cattle and an organic one. Okay. Sometimes people use them interchangeably, but they're different. They are So different. what's the difference? Price. Okay. It's totally <laughs> price. It has really price, price, price. Okay. Um, an organic we raise our cattle organically. Okay. We are not certified organic. Okay. If we had to be certified organic, we'd have to get every piece of hay we feed would have to be from an organic field, okay. a, a certified organic field. Okay. Everything we did would have to have a certified organic label to it. Okay. What we do is we go to fields, we buy hay, we know, we, we try to buy hay that hasn't been um, uh, chemically fertilized. It's very hard because what happens is if you get all of your hay from a an organic certified hay farm, it's twice as expensive. So our meat would be that much more expensive. Okay. But um, naturally raised means we, we raise them organically, even though we're not certified organic. Okay. I don't think there are many beef farms. There are a few that do have organic certification. And 
I'm not sure how they do it, but it's a very costly it's expensive. and expensive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it also means that there's no hormones and no antibiotics used. Not necessarily. So organic can I think there can be withdrawal period okay. with, with with organic. I'm not sure. I'm not okay. totally sure. But um, our cattle don't get added hormones or antibiotics. So we do those same practices, but we don't, we're not certified. Gotcha. Okay. Um, can you offer three simple tips for someone when they're looking to purchase beef, whether it's at a, at a farm or a, a grocery store? What are three simple tips that you know that you would recommend to someone? Well, it's really kind of easy. I would recommend local, local, and local. <laughs> Very simple. But okay. to make it to make it even to give it more more um, uh, to, to give you more detail, I think local is important because. If the animals raised locally, it's you can see where it's from. It's yeah. helping the environment you're living in. Yeah. Those grass-fed animals are fertilizing the grass in your neighbor's yard. Right. Um, you know that it's been raised in a with a, in a kind environment, um, and you also know you can talk to the farmer and see how it's been raised. Um, so I would also look for I think whether you're getting grain finished or grass finished local beef is not as important to me. It, it may be. You know, if it's if it's had some grain at the end of its life, it's not it's not going to hurt the animal to have a little grain. Um, it'll make it fatter and fattier, and some people like that extra fat. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the most important thing is local, and and if you can get grass fed, that's great too. That's a bonus. Yes. So we'll wrap up by um, having you share some tips um, for cooking. Oh. One of the things that I've noticed um, buying the, the more natural meats is sometimes it's a little bit tougher. Uh, and that makes sense because they're eating a little bit healthier, they're going to be a little bit leaner. Mm -hmm. So what are some, some suggestions that you can offer for cooking meat so that you can sort of preserve that tenderness? Right. A lot of people try to cook grass-fed meat the same way they do the traditional cuts that have a lot of fat. And if a cut has a lot of fat, you can't make a mistake with it. You can't kill it unless you, you know, burn it. Um, you need to cook it slowly. A slow, a slow cooking is much better. It breaks down the, 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 the lean muscles better. Um, I also like the less, the less um, top round, the, the lesser cuts, like a chuck steak, because a chuck steak has. It sounds like it's chunky, but it has some fat in it. It has probably the most fat, and it's got the best price, so that's a good cut to get. A pot roast are great, and if you put them in a crock pot, I like a pressure cooker. I use a pressure yeah. cooker. And I can cook a stew in an hour and get a really delicious, juicy meat. But you're right. What you need to do is preserve, cook slowly, and um, not overcook your meat. Don't cook it too much because it'll get kind of tough. Because we, we actually bought um, your prime rib roast uh -huh. for Christmas this uh -huh. last year. We put it in the crock pot, yeah. let it cook on, on low for about 10 hours. It was phenomenal. Awesome. Nice so that's, that's that keeps the moisture in Absolutely. it. Thanks for sharing that. So if someone wants to learn more about Milesmith Farm and your products, where should they go? Well, they can go to our website, which is milesmithfarm.com. We also have a very active Facebook page. I post pictures on it almost every, every, every day, yeah. sometimes twice a day. Yeah. Um, and of course, they can come to the store and meet us at the farmers markets. We're at the um, Coal Garden Farmers Market in Concord and Tilton, in um, the Tilton Farmers Market in Tilton. Okay. And what are your store hours here? Our store hours are Wednesday and Saturday from 10 to 6, Thursday from 2 to 6, and Friday from 4 to 6. That's the winter hours. In the spring, we're going to be changing our hours. So you need to check our website. Go to the website. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed. Uh, meeting all the animals here. It's a great, beautiful day outside. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, I'm Melissa Kerner from FriendYourBody.com. For more health and fitness tips, be sure to go to FriendYourBody.com. Talk to you soon.
Thank you.